Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. My name is Dr. Enolia Fode, and welcome, welcome to The Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. It brings me great, great pleasure to introduce to you Frazier Beecroft. Now, I just want you to know that Frazier embarked on his spiritual journey, experiencing visions of elements, and developing a deep connection with the unseen. And then over time, he explored various healing modalities and discovered a natural affinity for Reiki. Fraser's intuitive ability flourished as he began to read oracle cards, offering insight both online and at events. He later announced his readings with the wisdom of numerology and the power of color interpretation. After refining his skills, he sought a new path in healing, which led him to the harmonic egg and the revolutionary approach that aligns with this quest for holistic wellness and spiritual growth. So you are in for a treat and I want to welcome Fraser Beecroft. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be here, tell our story. <laughs> Oh, we're, I'm, I'm so glad that you're here and thank you for saying yes, because, you know, when someone takes the opportunity to work with a device that brings that wellness forward, it's, and especially with the level by which it does, and I don't want to give it away yet because I want you to be able to explain it, but it, it really, really is fascinating. So before we dive into that, I want to go on a journey with you. I want to go on a journey that just shares a little bit about maybe the very first time that you realized that it was more about the unseen than it was about the seen. So when in your life did, did this gift that you have of realizing that there was the unseen come to fruition? I think um, as a child, um, we used to have a big oak tree in the in the garden at home in the UK. And I used to see like elementals and we used to have a friend of ours who used to tell stories. And as he was telling the stories, I could see like the elementals actually there and I could imagine them and see them. And I thought that was normal. And, you know, of course it is normal, but, you know, you're told it's not normal. Um, and then, you know, you get told, oh, you know, you're seeing things that can't be real and, 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 it, and, you, and you push it away. And I think late, you know, later on in my life, I, um, I was in uh, a local, like a national trust place. So like a, um, I don't know, like a, a park. So like I say, like a Yosemite or something, I don't know. Um, and I was walking with a friend of mine and we saw a tree dyad. Now, I, I, we, we were like, you know, like I, I, as I'm seeing you, so this this tree dyad was was very much blended into the into the tree. But it was like we saw her, and I'll and I'll never ever ever forget that experience because it was like, and we, you know, my friend was even trying to take pictures, and you know, she, of course, she wouldn't let us do it. So that was like a, a, a big eye opening. I've always had an affinity with like at the elements in nature. Um, and when we were living in London, we would, you know, I was doing several courses. So I was doing that like, scrying and like using like the obsidian mirrors and such sort of things. So and that and that was from like a, a comment, like a flippant comment, oh I fancy trying this, this, and this. And somebody was like, oh, okay, well, I'll I'll teach you. And immediately put me into, into the advanced class. I mean, never having done anything like that in my life. It's like, okay, but obviously they saw something. So it, it just became normal or, you know, normal again, should I say. And that's how it started. Well, you know, I want to share how powerful this is because I didn't have an appreciation for this until I was actually put in the same scenario myself. And some of us, like you are gifted right off the bat with having the frequency to be able to see elementals. And for me, it took time. And I remember like with my path, 
I was taught by many different indigenous teachers. And I remember one of my grandfathers, grandfather Lynch um, Archuleta out of Arizona would do desert intensives with me. And what he would do is that he would bring me out into the desert and we would work on various things. That's where I truly learned to trust myself, to read the desert, to spend time with the land and um, understand that all things have energy and all things are capable of speaking to us. And, you know, I always received a really, really good comfort level in the desert. You know, I, I really loved what the desert brought. And I, that's where I learned to communicate with plant, plants and people are like, yeah, yeah, right. Communicate with plants. Okay. I don't care what anybody else says because I know it to be true. Yeah. And it saved my life. It saved my life because there was a time that I was in California and I was at a woman's retreat and we were having it in the Valley of Joshua tree. And Joshua tree, if you know that area is, is, is a desert. And, mm -hmm. and the places that you stay are also desert-like. And if you get lost in there, people have died. And I remember getting up before sunrise and taking my drum and going out to the rock clock. And I'm sitting there and I'm drumming in and I drum in the, the sunrise and I'm having my moments and everything's great. And it's like, okay, now I need to get back. And I didn't know where I was. Mm -hmm. I lost my orientation. And so instead of panicking, you know, for a little while, I just sat still. What can I do? Do I recognize anything? And I, I really felt disoriented. And so I walked out. I saw this little lead of plants going uphill. And then I saw, and I'm, I'm looking in all four directions, trying to figure out where do I go from here? And, you know, and I remember what grandfather Lynch taught me. And he's like, ask the plants. They will tell you. And I was like, Plants, please, please move the direction I'm supposed to go. Please move the directions mm -hmm. I'm supposed to go. And, you know, we're talking about a hot, still day, sun's right, beating down on you, dusty, dirt, dry rock, and very, very little plant. Mm -hmm. And they moved. Oops. And they moved. And I started walking up the incline and they moved again further up the incline. And I started walking up the incline and there it was, there was a house that I needed to get to. There was the path that I was looking for. I hadn't been too far off, but enough that if I went the wrong way, that was it. So I share that story because people need to know how powerful things the elements really are. And I remember hugging my favorite tree in California. And every morning I'd get up in this beautiful, beautiful tree. I couldn't even put my arms fully around it. It was so huge in its trunk. But the energy that she shared was just so, every time I passed by her, I'd stop and hug. And mm -hmm. people would walk by and look at me. I didn't care. Hugged my tree and felt so good. And there's a so, lot of, there's a lot of um, energy and there's a lot of, um, knowledge in the trees and I think people don't understand that you know they sort of say oh another tree hugger but actually there's a reason that we do that yeah and I wish they'd understand that when they're cutting them down for no reason yeah. other than oh it's in my way or whatever like keeping these these trees where they're supposed to be and their root systems that reach all throughout the world and in terms of the earth's crust everywhere they're like grass they're rooted everywhere and they're 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 connected everywhere and we don't realize it. We see a, a, a movie like Avatar that shows the root system touching for something special and oh, it's that prop. But really that's what trees are. Mm. That's what this is. That's what nature is. It's rooted. It's rooted in it it in it touches everything. You know? Yeah. So what was the when when you first started in, uh looking at modalities? What was it that compelled you to want to go to the first modality that you that you went to? Um, I had a feeling. I had a feeling. I can't describe it other than that. Um, I was drawn to a lady um, locally to, to to me, and I was on I was on my own, and I'd. Um, but all the family was away 
and I decided uh, it's time. And I didn't know anything about any healing modalities. I didn't know anything about what I was doing. I just thought this lady sounds interesting and I'll, and I'll go and see her. And I went to her. So I was just like, you know, so it was like Terra, Terra, uh, Terra Mai, Reiki, Terra Mai and Seikin Reiki. So it was, you know, again, a little bit different. And we, it was just her and I, so it was like one-on-one. -on -one. And when she taught me the different things that we needed to do, and then she's like, okay, right, you know, go on then, you know, you have a go. And she was blown away. And she's like, have you, have you, have you done this before? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, no, no, you, you've, you've done this before. No idea what you're talking about. Because again, at that time, you know, we're, we're still like unsure that what's going on. And she was just like, that was amazing. She said, that is, it's like, you know, not many of my students can do what you've just done. And I'm like, just shrugged it off. Um, and that was it. You know, it was like, okay, now, you know, I want more. So of course you have to wait a little bit. And I went back and I did my second level. And for some reason, I never finished. I never did like, I didn't, I didn't actually get to the stage where I wanted to teach. I did want to teach, but it was never convenient. It was never, and, and, it, and it never felt right. It was like, okay, this is enough. And I found a few other, a few other like healing modalities after that. And there was, there was one that we did, it was called Blue E. So that was again, tapping into different things. And that was to do with um like beings of light and universal energy so it was like we were, i was seeing like um blue um i don't know for want of a better word like alien alien beings something i kept seeing these these beings all around and that that led me on the path where when i was being taught um i i, I helped I, I assisted in one of the classes and i could actually see the energy and i could feel energy so again, that's when the colour thing started to kick in as well. But I never, I never ever felt I wanted to be. I didn't want to take it to a level where like I'm teaching, teaching, teaching because something didn't feel right. It was like, okay, this is enough. Uh, so from a feeling to like, you know, that's 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 how I am. That's you know, for me, it's about feeling and senses. I'm very tactile. I'm very earthy. Um, so it's all for me, it's about senses. So that's how we started. And it's beautiful. Will you share with us how you ventured into listening up, uh, about music and tonality and understanding that frequencies had a significant impact into the realm of, of how we're viewing and, and, and what we're doing? Yeah, I mean, again, it's like, you know, like as you, as you, progress as you as you learn more because like you know we're constantly learning I'm still learning now I started to understand that um you know like as with nature and like you know the, the frequencies of nature and the sounds the sounds of the birds the sounds of the animals and all these different things and the and like you know even like the snowflakes and the, the frequency of the snowflakes and the and the and the patterns and I started to find it more and more and as as a boy um, I was very much into classical music. Um, I started to learn the violin, which was very unusual. You know, like I had my, I was, I was, I was, I loved it. I loved the music and I always did love music. And as, as I got older, I started to find out that actually this music is not just, not just to be listened to. It's not just nice on the ear. It also has, there's, there's something called frequency that can actually help um and i started to do more and more digging and, and you know and there's there was there was at the time there wasn't you know youtube was really like quite just starting out but people started talking about this thing called frequency and you know healing modalities like you know um and at that time people had just started to use like sound bowls um i spent some time in in australia and they always talk about the didgeridoo and the didgeridoo being used as a healing modality for like bones and ligaments 
and it was just something that I, you know, I thought, oh, this is, this is, this is, you know, I like this. Um, and there were drums, you know, the, the sacred drums and like, you know, creating, creating a sacred drum. So, you know, there's, there's more, I mean, there's more and more stuff now, but at the time there wasn't a lot of stuff. So it was just a bit of experimenting and playing with, playing with different frequencies and trying different things. Um, so that, that's where it started, you know, and, I, and, and again, now there's a, there's so much stuff. They talk about the frequencies to help with like, you know, if people have got like, you know, poor teeth, they can listen to a particular frequency to help with the teeth. There's, you know, there's stuff with uh, Raymond Rife, again, was, was known for all the frequency stuff that he did. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's TED talks about this stuff now. So it's like there was more and more stuff becoming becoming available, and I, I I can't honestly quite say that it was only in the last few years that it really like hit home that actually these this is life changing. This is something that we can use, and again with the colours, we can use the tones, the frequency, and the colours to help people, even if it's just to like make them happy doesn't necessarily mean it have to like well, I've got this disease and I have to do this it's just to keep people happy and keep them like help them with creativity or whatever this is so important because whether you share it or not it's it's like I see the leap of orbit the the next level that that one goes in order to really understand that if you were to think about your life and each of us reaches a precipice in our life where it's just like, okay, I've been operating here, but now I'm ready to go to the next level because I know that I can impact people. I know that I can bring healing to the world. I know that I can contribute to humanity. When was that? And maybe that would be the perfect time to introduce to us about the egg. Oh. Wow. Um, I guess maybe three, four years ago was the big like, you know, light bulb mo moment. Um, we, you know, like people talk about the great reset and like, you know, how, how we're all gonna have like, you know, lots of money and things are gonna be revalued. So um, Lena and I started to think about, we, well, sorry, go back. When we first met, um, we always said we wanted to have a healing center. We didn't so know I'm gonna stop it right there. <laughs> Share with the audience that Lena, who Lena is to you. <laughs> she's my wife. She's my yeah. soulmate. She's my my be all oh, my my being. My she's my the yin to the yang, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know we've been together many many times over the over the centuries. I guess we want to say. Um, we always talked about having a healing center. We didn't know what it was. We didn't know what, how it's going to look. At that time, it was just a pipe dream. And then maybe three, four years ago, we started to say, okay, well, like, if we're going to do something, uh, and we were working in the, in the um, uh, medical system at that point, um, and we wanted to sort of like, you know, see changes because we were seeing stuff wasn't helping you know the, the normal traditional way of doing things wasn't helping um you know um i, I was told i you know like i i don't put this now like you know certain certain things if you do this this will make you better if you do that that will make you better and it was just it was just nonsense um so we we decided like, well, let's look at something. And we started to look at, you know, people talk about med beds, you know, so these med beds are something that, you know, you go inside and everything's fixed, okay? So again, pipe dream. But for some reason I kept getting like, this thing called a harmonic chamber just kept popping up and just brushed it to one side. And then it kept coming up. So it didn't matter what I was doing. I was on Amazon, this thing popped up. So on Facebook, this thing popped up. I was listening to a video, it popped up. So it's like, okay. So we were looking at um, oxygen chambers, so the hyperbaric chambers, or maybe we can do a hyperbaric chamber. And again, we didn't have the money, we didn't know how we were going to do it. We just thought, okay, well, if we were going to have a sensor, what we're going to do? 
we'll have a high right chamber, we'll do Reiki, we'll do massage, we'll do all the traditional stuff. But there was something about this harmonic egg, this harmonic chamber. Um, and we, at the time, it was it was only in the States and Canada. So, you know, it was a bit far to go and have a little session. And then we found out it was in the UK. So we decided to go and see what, what this thing is. You know, is it is it as good as everybody's talking about? And we went and had a session and that was it. So that was the, that was how we were introduced to what we now have as our as our life, I guess. Mm -hmm. so, and so, yes, take us take us on the journey. So you 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 have this experience. You you have that. Did it did it make a difference? Did it did it just like blow everything apart? What what happened? The first time I sat inside, I was like the boy with, um, you know, like excited didn't know what to do was like you know um you're supposed to well in theory you're supposed to sit in there quietly and close your eyes no i sat there eyes open wanted to know where where's the music coming from why are the lights changing where's the speakers da 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 da, da, da. the whole time i was in there i was just distracted you know we set an intention i was just like yeah yeah whatever didn't you know didn't understand what i was doing and then we ate in the evening about six o'clock and eight o'clock I was asleep and it's like, boom, there's something about this. So, and then we went back three more times and each time we went, it was, you know, different experiences. One time I asked to be more creative and I got, I had a vision. I had a vision of me as like a young boy um, and I was drawing and I saw this, this lady who was a dancer and, you know, I ended up marrying her. But this was just, I'm sat inside this chamber and I'm like, where's this all coming from? So it was just, it was just like, we need to, we need to have this. We need to see. And and we found, the more we found out about it and then um, we went, when we went to see the lady in the UK, she was telling us what we could do, how it could help people, what sort of things it helps with. And and, and that was it. It, it. it was, it was literally just from a, Oh, let's go and see this thing. You know, somebody, somebody here says it's like you look at it and go, "Oh, isn't that pretty? Isn't it nice?" And then you have a session. It's like, "Wow, what's just happened?" And that, and that was exactly what it was like for us. Okay, okay. So then, share with us what the egg does because I understand about sound frequency and and understanding that it 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 deals with the illnesses you you would I would I would ask you to go a little bit back a, a little bit and and tell people about frequency and what it does to the body as us being energetic beings so let, let, let's explain about the 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 egg the chamber a little bit and we we can tie that in so so it's called like a harmonic chamber it's in the shape of an egg okay it uses um sacred geometry so there's the three six nine tesla principles again so that's like the perfect shape apparently um to, to 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 help with sound it's made out of wood okay so it's a living breathing animal object um and the shape is like a womb okay so you you, you know you sit inside it and it we, we we put in there consciously created music okay so this is where the frequency comes in the actual the actual chamber itself some people say it resonates at between 1300 and 1500 hertz. Now, when people talk about frequency, they talk about 432, 528, 999, whatever. And those are different bits of frequency that have been associated with different ways of um, helping each other. So 428, 432 <laughs> is, 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 is nature. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's like supposed to be very, very healthy, very calming. There's been a lot of research. Again, like I go back to Raymond Rife. People can look up Raymond Rife. And he was doing um, stuff with blood work and frequencies and actually helping to attack um, and kill like diseased cells just with the use of frequency. OK, so this is how powerful we know this thing is. And, and with us, we have, I say, consciously created music. 
The music doesn't necessarily have to be at a particular frequency, but what it does do is it uses different musical instruments that have been created within the, the, the track. So for example, we may have a flute in the track. The flute is good for clearing your mind and clarity. It may have uh, the cello or violin in it. The cello and violin are very good for like, opening your heart strings. So it's about loving yourself. You know, the drums and the didgeridoo, like we mentioned before, is very good for ligaments and also for um, like healing bones. But it's also very good for like PTSD. So people with PTSD benefit from that sort of thing. Um, the, the harp, the piano are very, very good for like harming people, so relaxation. So it's not just a combination of the frequency that we, we've got here. We're also using consciously created music that has been that has been made specifically for the chamber. Okay. Um, and also we have the, the, the benefit of the lights as well. So, so we've got different colored lights one above you, one below you. So your body's absorbing not only the, the music, the frequency, but it's also absorbing the lights. Wow, this is amazing. And so I know that you're located in Mexico right now. Yeah. Correct? yeah. And yeah. so is this a, a situation where you can only do in-person sessions? No, no. And this is the beauty of the thing. Oh, wow. You know, what, what, what we do also do is we do um, remote sessions and we have clients um, all over the world at the moment. So we have people in New Zealand, States, Canada, UK, Europe, um, and you know, and even across across from where we are. Um, we what we do is we take, uh, or we ask for a picture of the person, like a head and shoulders picture, and we take their birth name. So what's on the birth certificate? Not necessarily what's on the passport, um, because that is the point. That's like the zero point. That's the time when, in theory, there's no disease, there's no problems, and uh, we take the date of birth, um, and that helps us to, to to like tune into that energy. We always set an intention as well. So the, one of the biggest things is about the intention. So what's the intention of of you know you having a session? You know, is it clarity? Is it uh, is it like abundance? Is it I actually have this you know back pain that I want to deal with? Okay, but not only people, we can also treat like animals. Um, we can also help uh, with land. We can also help with um, uh, like buildings or businesses. So, you know, we can have a picture of a business or a land, piece of land, and we can have it run a session with that bit of land. You know, I I'll give you an example. It's when when there was the problems uh, with Hawaii, when there was the, the you know all the devastation over there, all the centre owners were asked to have a picture of Hawaii, put a picture into the chambers, and we played a particular bit of music with the intention of healing the land. You know, when and that was, it's like reset, you know, reset the frequency of the land and reset you know the whole area. And and it and it people that were living there, we found that they said the energy changed. So it's 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 you know like it's like somebody says like faxing energy to another place. I love this. I love this, and you know it's really important because I ran across um, this particular healer. His name was um, Christopher Cornelius, and he does that. He does resets of the emotional body, and yeah. so he'll name the emotional body, and then he'll just basically state the tone. Yeah. that it would be reset too. And by stating it, the subconscious automatically accepts that tonality or that that reset instruction yeah. and resets the emotional body based on the meridian system or based on whatever he's, he's particular name. So are you in essence saying that that's what you're able to do is do a reset based on the tonality? And, you know, um, and I want to mention these because I, I, I want to make sure that people really truly understand. So for example, Dr. John Ballou created tuning forks, okay? Yeah. And he called it human tuning. And um, I'm, I'm mentioning him because what he did is when he was testing it out and, and how he kind of stumbled over it because he tells a story is that he used himself in a uh, uh, sound deprivation chamber. And when he was in that sound deprivation chamber, wanting to know how the human body would react to silence, to his um, surprise, what he found out is that he could still hear tones. 
he could still hear music. And what he realized is that he was hearing the tones of his body and that wow. each organ has a certain vibration and tone to it. And that tone is what keeps it in balance. And yeah. then when our organs are actually in balance, what they're off is they're off key, right? The tone kind of goes lower, 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 and it needs to be brought back up. Yeah. And then the tuning forks and the way that the tuning forks work is that when it hears the right proper tone, the organ or actually readjusts back to that appropriate tone because it hears where it's supposed to be. And that's how you, how tuning forks brings you to alignment. But you know, what do you do? You playing them, right? Yeah. And then the vibration goes for a little while, then it ends out. And so I'm trying to correlate that to what you just shared with us, which is that here you are in a chamber with steady tone, correct? It, am I correlating that yeah. correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, I mean, it's like it's it's different. It's different bits of music. So, um, when when somebody has the first session, we call it an autonomic nervous system reset. Okay, so it's exactly what you know you said before. It's a reset. So you know it recalibrates every cell of the being. Okay, so like you know it's optimal optimal peace and 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 being in a sense. And then we work from that. You know, it doesn't matter if you're healthy, it doesn't matter if you've got, um, you know, some something like, you know, like some medical issue. We still do it with the same with everybody, but we also take that with the light. So the, some, some of the music to start off with might be just like piano, very gentle music. First of all, like children will put a different bit of music on them, potentially what we would do as an adult. Or if there's somebody who's very traumatised, we'll put a very gentle bit of music on. So... It's, it's not necessarily just that one specific tone, it's whatever instrument is in that actual track. So as I said before, you may have piano and nature sounds and water, or you may have something that's got like, you know, ch uh, piano, cello, violin, and other instruments in it. And what's, what's really interesting is if you, say you go to a sound bath, you know, people have started going to sound baths, and, you know, over here we have them on the beach, which is fantastic. But the problem that you've got there is the music is dispersed. Okay? The music disperses around you. Whereas when you're actually in the chamber, it has got, it's got nowhere to go. You know, so you, you, your body is absolutely absorbing that music. It's absorbing the tones, it's absorbing the instruments. And that, again, that is one of the beautiful things here. Now, you also mentioned before about tones. So once you've, you know, once you've had like, you know, a reset, we have, options for like other sessions so one of the sessions that we can do is um there's a lady who did a study uh, for many many years of listening to people's voices so she recorded the voices and she worked out that based on their uh, she worked it on i think it was astrological signs but every single body has a missing tone so we have tracks that based on uh, you know your astrological uh, sign we can put that missing tone back into the body so oh, wow. you know we 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 have there's lots of at the moment we have about 50 50 tracks so each track has a different thing that we deal with and some of the tracks will deal with multiple things okay mm -hmm. so it's not just okay well i want to i want to be more peaceful it may be i want to be more creative or i want to be more abundant or i want to get rid of the stress i want to get rid of the pains in my back or i've got like you know something else that's going on that got sore throat or you know my eyes are, 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 are hurting so we'll choose a particular track based on their intention and what's best for them at that time and you know and just like you know is it like a one hit wonder not necessarily you know sometimes it can be some people have come to us and had one session and they've like you know the pains that they've had have disappeared other people come a lot more regularly so it, it's it's very much an individual you know what people want it's not like you know you must have x amount of sessions it's like have one session see how you go on and we'll take it from there most people do multiple sessions wow i would imagine and can you have too many sessions <laughs> what what we say is i don't think you can ever have too many sessions but the the, the thing is i mean this is really really powerful and people don't understand this um we recommend five to seven days before another session and also like you know not doing other modalities because what tends to happen and again sometimes people think like you know more is better so i'll do right. i'll have massage and i'll have acupuncture and i'll have something else you know and that, and they're all fantastic things 
But if you overload your body with too many modalities, you know, it, it can actually have a detrimental effect. So we always say, what well, leave time, leave space to do different modalities and allow them to actually take place, allow them to your body to integrate them. So, you know, you, whilst you can't have too many, if you have multiple things day after day after day, your body can go into like shock. And, you know, it's like you may get headaches or whatever, you know. So that's the thing. So we just advise people just be careful. Okay. And then I have to ask the generic question. It's not generic, but everybody's going to ask that in terms of medical problems, in terms of cancers or um, trying to go into remission as you have been identified with a specific issue, dis-ease or whatever the case may be, how, how do you handle those those types? We of have protocols for um, different different things. Um, and again, you know, we we, we have had uh, one of our friends was having chemotherapy and she she had treatments in another area after after it's not treatments. She had sessions in another area. Um, and she found it really helped her. You know, we can't we can't promise to heal anybody. But Absolutely. what we can yeah, what we can do is we can um, you know, certainly help people with uh, whatever ailments they've got. Absolutely. This is phenomenal. And um, where has this been? Oh my goodness, it's <laughs> I'm shocked that it's not popular, it's not everywhere, you know. Um they're, they're, they're mainly in the States and Canada. Um, I think there's maybe 150 around the world now. So it's mainly the States, mainly Canada. Um, there's two in Peru, one in Ecuador, um, you know, a few in the UK. So that is, it, the big thing about this is like anything, any new thing, although this is not new, it's about people finding out what, you know, mm-hmm. what it does, how it can help them. Um, and, you know, and, 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 and finding out more. So, you know, the thing about this is that I just, I wanna say thank you because knowing the background that you come from and knowing that you bring a plethora of information and knowledge and wisdom in order to address this means the world, which is why I thought it was so important for you to share your story and how you traverse life in the different modalities and everything, because this isn't something that you just stumbled on. This is this is almost like an answer to your prayers in the respect that, you know, you wanted to be able to contribute and give back to humanity in a certain way. And this is how you found to do it, all encompassing based on, you know, going the medical route and, and chasing, not chasing modalities, that's not the right thing to say, but experiencing different modalities and then understanding that it all roads led to this particular area of expertise. And, and I just want to say thank you for what you do. I, I think it's interesting, like, you know, the, the, the journey that, that I've been on and we've both been on, you know, if you just said to me that we're going to be running a centre with, like, you know, a harmonic chamber, I, I'd, have, I'd have just like, nah, you know, I, I would have been more like, oh, you know, or maybe the, maybe the, uh, the reflexology or something else. So this is just, this is, more than we could have asked for you know when we know it is helping people and it's just you know we're we're honored and thrilled to be able to provide the service and be able to sort of like you know what's lovely is seeing people when they come out or having a conversation with somebody after they've had a session um we had um a an elderly gentleman come that his daughter uh, you know uh, asked you know told him that you know to, to come while they were on holiday here and this man didn't know what on earth had got what's happening, but he came out and his eyes were sparkling and he was just smiling. And to see somebody like that and just that 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 says it all. That that is all we can ask, you know, and it's just it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to see. Wow. And you know, I didn't dawn on me to ask, but like what type of music? Is, is played? Is it along the lines of classical? Is it along the lines it, of? It's, it's all sorts. Um, it's, it's as I say, like, I mean, we have some music that's like jungle music. We have some nature music, but it's it's been created specifically for like, you know, to include different wow. instruments to deal with different ailments. So like we've got creative music, we've got abundance music, we've got, you know, as I said before, each track 
and do multiple things. Okay, so depending on what we want. So, you know, we even have mantras. So we have like, you know, we have some tracks with Sanskrit mantras in, which again is great for prosperity, you know, like and 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 like clearing, clearing things. Um, we have other in we have we've just recently got some like bee music. So you've got, you know, the sound of a beehive in the background as and then that the, the tracks that you know, that musical instruments on top. So all these, so it's not necessarily just like one tone. It's like you're listening to like an, an orchestra of different yeah. you know, um, instruments all in, in resonance with like, you know, conscious created like space that they've been created for. Yeah. What is a bee? What are, what are bees address? The, bee, the bees are very calming. So, like you know, if you, um, there's been studies that show, like if you know, like the bee, the beekeepers, like you know, when they're working with the bees, they they their stress and anxiety just goes out the window. You know, it's like so it's very they're very very calming. So having like the the the, the beehives and, and the, the work like walking around, it actually reduces anxiety and reduces stress. And can help people like you know become a lot calmer. So there's 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 all sorts of things like that, and we get um, regularly get like new tracks. Um, so we've got some uh, that are coming out soon that have been created in Peru, you know. So there's 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 all sorts on there. Can't That's give anything specific. <laughs> <laughs> so this has been absolutely wonderful. I can't believe we're coming up on an hour. And, you know, is there anything that you would like to leave with our audience? I, I, you definitely have to leave your, your email address and everything. We'll get to the contacts. But is there anything that you would like to leave our audience with as a, a thought in terms of healing? There I go. I mean, like, you know, sometimes we, something like so simple, you know, if you, t if you, if you take this, to its actual simplicity, it's a it's a wooden chamber with some lights and a bit of music. Sometimes something so simple can be so powerful. Just give it a go. Just try it. You know, if you if you're intrigued, if you're curious, reach out and let's see if we can help. Excellent. Please share with us how people can reach you to set up a session. Give them your website, please. Give them everything. Our website is um, apapachar.earth, which is A-P-A-P-A-C-H-A-R, and then dot earth. Now, I, we never talked about this, but apapacha uh, is, is like an old, um, uh, I think it's Nautil, which is like Mayan word, and it means to hug with the soul. So we thought it was very important to, to have like a, you know, a name that resonated with locals. So yeah, websites, apapacha.earth. Um, Instagram is Instagram.com and then forward slash apapacha underscore earth. Um, emails apapacha.earth at gmail.com. Um, on the website, it's got, it's got the links on there as well. So those are the easiest ways to get hold of us. Okay. Thank you so, so much. This is Fraser Beecroft here to share with us about the egg and what a journey it has been and what a pleasure it has been. And if you liked what you saw and you know that this can help somebody, please, 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 please share it. Like us. Know that Fraser's information will be put down in the information box as you look at the description, description of this from YouTube and from the lives. And I just want to say take care to everyone. Thank you, Fraser, for being with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you. And um, this has been another episode of The Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.